anybody can take awesome stuff and make money on it when they buy it at the thrift store, but sometimes you find stuff that's less awesome. We're gonna show you how to make it over and turn that less awesome thrift store stuff into profit. Pro tip number one, buy stuff with a good shape that is a material you can paint and then pick just a couple of colors each week so that way you're not washing a million paintbrushes. Assembly line. Okay, so some of this stuff just needs cleaned up and painted, but some of these things have repairs that needed to be made. This topper here was all broken up. It had some detail, so I just sanded it down. This was also broken off, so I sanded that down. On here you can see this is missing the top of that design. I'm just going to leave this particular one because you can't see it from all angles, but this was broken up really bad, so I had to go ahead and sand that down. And then this, just going to quickly remove the wax. It's pretty simple. Some things need cleaned, some things need wax removal. Just takes a few minutes, and a lot of people pass stuff like this over. They're just like, oh, that looks gross, but really it's just done. Wax is gone. Anytime we find giant roosters, we pick them up. I usually pay about $20 each and we sell them anywhere from $80 to $100 painted. I know that sounds crazy, but really giving them a nice French country paint job amps up how awesome they are. And most of the time when we do our live sales, they sell out before the video is even over, before they're even painted, like these roosters. So we've got weathered wood. We're using DIY paint, sticks to almost anything. You can pick that up at jamierayvintage.com. One coat is gonna be great for these. I'll come back, touch up anywhere that needs it, and white wax. Yep, white wax is the magic on that. So this here is just a Lewis and Clark box. Really, it's a Camp Chef box that, if it would have had this part of the logo, I might have just left it, repainted it, maybe distressed some of that back. But this here, I I don't want, really want that logo on my box, so I'm gonna sand it down. It's fairly soft wood, so I'm hoping some 60 grit will do that. We're gonna go in the garage and do that now. All right, I'll keep painting. We'll see how much I can get painted while you sand. So when I bought this, the hope was that I could just sand this down real quick, so if I can't, the $10 might not have been worth it. All right, we're set up with random orbital sander. They're my favorite, they work really quick. And then we've got some 60 grit sandpaper and this should make quick work, fingers crossed. All right, so I broke out my DeWalt sander. We tried this Bosch sander out and it's great. It does a really good job and it's got six speed settings, but you can see that this is taking it off even faster. I love these little DeWalt sanders, they're about 60 bucks. To give you an idea of how fast Jamie is at painting, it took me 10 minutes timer on the camera recording while I was sanding, and Jamie's painted a first coat on all of this stuff while I was gone. Well, you know, I'm kind of good with a brush, but this is also why you pick a color and go with it, especially if you're flippers like us. If you pick different colors every week, when you put it in your booth or on your website, it's gonna look like you painted all different colors. You just gotta, you know, commingle it. This mirror was 10 bucks. Couple of screws on the back and the mirror comes out. So we're gonna go ahead and just paint that. And then I've got these hooks and I'm gonna show you a little potted plant that I've just painted a plot. Plot, just painting the pot. All going apothecary and white wax. I usually pick a couple colors every week, roll with it and get my stuff done. DIY apothecary is the perfect color to mix with white wax. And I like to use it over dark because when I wet distress and the dark comes through, it looks really cool. All right, over on my box, we were gonna paint the whole thing, but I've got our new rooster flower stands for quality stencil. And I think I'm just gonna do the rooster flower on the top and then stands for quality on the front and on the back, I'm just gonna do quality all by itself. All right, labeling is rarely perfect, so I'm not gonna measure. I know some of you are gonna get an eye twitch, but I'm just gonna eyeball this. And then to keep me from having an accident down here when I'm doing the flower portion, I'm just gonna put that over that. And one more. Keep you from having an accident, is that like there. potty training tape? Yeah, it's potty training tape. Stencil training, potty training, similar. I'm using black velvet from DIY and it's gonna be a nice soft black color here. It's soft, can you have a soft black color? I'm just gonna offload right on to the drop cloth. And because I'm swirling, I'm gonna hold the stencil down as I go. You kind of start over on the plastic when you swirl and then just 
work your way over to the stencil. That way you don't lift. See how this U has a space that's not connected? So I'm gonna make sure that gets held down really well. Okay, dip, offload. Mirror is painted so that the stenciling, I found an extra few square feet of space here. So I'm gonna be working two $4 items. This one is just gonna get a paint job. This one I'm just painting the bottom. This is a really dated finish on here. Pro tip, if you don't want your greenery to get painted, just tape it up with masking tape. I suggest dollar store kind because it's not super sticky. So it doesn't leave residue. I'm just gonna get these painted while it's up stenciling. Oh yeah, that's good. Nope, got a little juicy there. That's actually perfectly okay. Now it looks like it's authentic. Okay, weathered wood. Dollar store cup, a little bit of salt wash. I mix it up to a consistency that I like, but I don't necessarily follow the directions. In the case of painting this cute little crock, which I kind of already started, but we thought we were filming and we weren't. Um, I just want some good texture to make it look like old stoneware and like cement. The salt wash really makes this clay paint adhere even better. And the texture covers up any design. Sometimes when you paint over design, then you go to wax and distress what happens. Sometimes if you paint over design, a design comes back when you distress and wax. So I like to add a little texture to my paint that helps hide it. All right, I've got our new Mora Clock Face style stencil and it comes complete with hands. I'm not gonna be putting the hands on here. What I want off of this is just the numbers and it's got a 60, a 15, a 30, a 45, but I think I'm gonna just go with box number seven because technically if I mask this off, I have the whole number set, you know, zero through nine, but I'm just gonna put this up in the corner like bonus, is it a clock? Is it numbers? It's both. All right, these little bowls had some hint of popcorn on there. Uh, just a little design, it's a hint of design. And I'm gonna use this Brillo pad. Hopefully that scrubs it right on off. If not, we'll try a magic eraser. Okay, Brillo pad didn't work. Magic eraser coming up next. Magic eraser also not working on, on it. What about sandpaper? It's just a little spot, but we want to put a transfer on this. Next up, 600 grit sandpaper. Oh, that zinged it right off. We're going through scraps and remnants of what's left of the decor transfer of the classic pots from IOD. And I'm gonna look inside here, see what we've got left, but we love putting these on uh, ceramic jars, even glass and windows, mirrors, stuff like that, it works great. You just don't wanna wash them with water or cleaners because that might damage them because we don't seal them, we're just gonna leave them as is on there. Oh. Okay, okay, so we have one transfer left in here. Let's see if it's even sticky because this was just running around free and loose in there. Okay, so we, it looks like it's breaking away. So I think we can manage to save this. Ah, all right, so that slipped off, but I'm not, not gonna sweat it. I think I'll just add it right there.
While I'm playing with these pots, Jamie's second coating the roosters. Roosters are the theme today. We got roosters on the box, painting roosters to make them look like stone. We'll call it our stone finish. We started painting these on our Saturday Night Live thrift haul. We usually paint at the end of all those videos to kind of show a little bit of what we do to these, but we've got to finish them and we're going to paint the bottoms. You can see Jamie's just throwing some gravel road from DIY on there real quick. We'll do two coats, cover it real good. I'm going to finish stenciling these. I've got two jars to do. These are just a classic example of a totally overlooked item at the thrift store. All right, we're gonna do a gravel road stencil on here. Jamie's like, hey, do you think you can stencil this round thing on this pot and make it curve? You know, we'll, we'll try. I feel like the F is gonna be the hardest part. It's a lot of steps for a little pot. For Rashonda, do you have a butter? I went up underneath. So I'm gonna just stress over the top of the stencil, give it a little age and pull back some of that pink that's underneath. Um, this actually sold to our friend Rashonda and I know that she likes the pink. So I'm okay with some of the pink coming through. Are you gonna paint the bottom when it's all dry? Yep, I'm gonna pull off this price tag and put a little bit more of the weathered wood on there and we'll be good to go. Just numbering these jar lids with the more of rock. Time for wax a palooza. I'm just gonna clear wax all the decor that we just painted. Some of it's gonna get white wax, but this one is getting clear. And when it dries, it will dry lighter than it looks right now. Just bring out that wood grain and brush strokes just a little bit. All right, now is the moment you've all been waiting for. We're gonna be finished, so. <laughs> We're just going to put wax on these. We're going to do white wax. Some of them need some distress. We'll show you how to do that. And then we'll just assembly line this and show you pictures of everything. White wax coming. And it's, the white wax really changes it a lot right well, off the bat. This was kind of warm, so it's melting it a little bit. I had it out in the sun to help it dry faster. Oh, I thought maybe you heat that. No, the sun was doing way more work than the heat gun was. And I think you got to do is flip it over. So you make sure you get all the undersides. Well, and every now and then we use the white wax too, like if it, cause it's gonna distress it, the paint's really fresh. We just painted it an hour ago. So it's gonna kind of do a wet distress effect on there and the white wax covers that all up when you're waxing. So if you're a one man band, do this in sections so that your wax doesn't start curing up before you're able to wipe it back. Cause it only takes, if it's warm, it only takes about 15, 20 minutes for it to really start to set up. And if it's a bigger piece and you're trying to do a lot of detail, you can really uh, have to rub to get that wax off where you don't want it. Another trick, if you get too much white wax where you don't want it, come back with some clear wax. Oh, can you hit some wax right there? Come back with some clear wax over the top of it. It almost works like an eraser. Yeah, and I like to come back when I'm all done sometimes with a um, little stencil brush or a little toe. detail brush and make sure anywhere that I missed it's wax. If you want to get your husband to help you, there's like some event that he's been wanting to watch on TV, maybe a sporting event or whatever. <laughs> be like, hey, we will watch all the boxing you want. We just got to uh, wax some stuff. It's a pro tip I learned from my Aunt Willie. Before my Uncle Bud passed away, he loved to watch boxing and she loved foot rub, so She'd give him her feet and he'd rub her feet while they were watching boxing and the more intense it get, the better the foot rub got. I thought it was genius. <laughs> Last thing we got to worry about. Oh, we still got to wax these too. Okay, we got to wax those, but we're going to wet distress these and get this wax. And Jamie just painted right over the metal, but not a big deal. We'll include that in the wet distressing and be fine.
So you know this is just just a rag. Mostly dry. It has a little bit of wax on it. If I wanted to wax this whole thing, you could really get that off with some clear wax. Thanks for watching guys. We hope this inspires you to take some average, not super amazing junk you find out thrifting or yard selling or maybe in your own house and turn it into some fun home decor. We used quite a few different things today, but for the most part, we didn't actually use up that much product. It was very little paint, very little wax and some stencils. A little paint goes a long way with home decor. If you want to paint products like this, you can visit jamierayvintage.com. Zeb's going to drop the link below. If you want to purchase anything you see, some of it is still available at jrvhome.com. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.